it literally feels like you're Jiminy Cricket sitting next to me and like telling me these things I always tell myself. I honestly, my relationship with astrology, I've always been like into it, but I don't think I'm into it as much as a lot of my friends. I'm really fascinated by astrology. The scientific, rational side of my brain sometimes feels skeptical or feels kind of crazy when I'm talking to other people about it. I'm obsessed with astrology. I like to consider myself one of the many resident witches at BuzzFeed, but by no means am I a professional astrologer. I'm someone who's done a lot of reading of like books and like on the internet. I've never had a real relationship, so I hope that I've get some tips or learn a little bit about myself that helps me do that. I would love any information from the astrologer on what love should look like for me, like what kind of people I should be connecting with or drawn to. I wanna know more about myself. I wanna know more about who knows what's gonna happen. I might be single for like five more years or forever and hopefully not. <laughs>
you can't get what you want, even though you've taken great pains to get something else. Mm -hmm. It's really crazy to have someone who's never met you before look at a screen on a computer and tell you things about yourself that would take you years to try to explain to someone. If you try on a pair of jeans and the jeans look terrible on your ass, that does not mean your ass is terrible. It means the jeans are terrible for your ass. Mm -hmm. And you kind of got to trust. People are meant to be your people. And mm -hmm. if you can allow yourself to say, okay, the evidence shows this person doesn't work for me in the way I want a relationship to work, and you can allow yourself to be her, and you can allow yourself to walk away, then you're actually, you're being really healthy. When things are really vulnerable, and there's a risk of you being seen for who you really are, it's hard for you to let somebody in in that sexual romantic way. It puts you in a position where you're watching for safety. And when we're watching for safety, what we're really doing is tracking danger. And when you're tracking danger, you're not open to love. You're trying to protect yourself from being harmed. But here's the joke. We call it falling in love because you get hurt. Inevitably, love is pain, love is trauma, yeah. and that it's worth it because you know the, what they say the brighter the light, the deeper the shadow. It was kind of uncomfortable to be so vulnerable and to have someone who could just see through kind of my guards because I'm pretty good at like maintaining how people see me and what people think of me. So it's kind of hard to exist in a space where it was like no matter what guard I put up, it could be seen right through. I'm gonna give you easy steps. One is breathe. See how you're not breathing right now? Did you catch yourself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I right. breathe. Yeah. You have this Mercury-Neptune um, opposition in your birth chart, which means in English, you have a tendency to hold your breath as a way, it's like you're waiting for things to happen to you. So you're kind of like abandoning yourself, leaving your body. And so if you breathe, you're making the choice to stay present. And when you're present, you have more choices. Honestly, like everything that you're saying is pretty much like my subconscious, like at all times. Are there a lot of charts like mine where there are people who need to kind of play in that mid space between both? The problem is you want the ocean and the forest. <laughs> you want two things that don't happen at once. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a split within you. It's, it's because you're not owning the complexity and the messiness of what you want. Mm -hmm. And if you can own that and own like, oh, okay, so when I fall for someone, I'm like weird and needy and also need space. And I just need to learn how to be kind to myself around that and like mm -hmm. move slowly enough with men so that I don't act outside of my best interests and I like work with that. Mm -hmm then you'll find the man. Your work at this time is not to find the perfect partner. Your work at this time is to be the perfect partner to yourself. Mm. So that what you're attracted to changes and what you're willing to consent to is clearer. It's coming from a clearer center within you. I think I'm gonna put myself out there a lot more and try to not take so much charge. Show interest and show that I'm willing and open to be in a relationship, but at the same time, once I crack the door, I wanna let someone else open it. I found it to be like one part magic, one part therapy, and one part like having someone read your diary aloud to you. I think especially when you're out there and you're dating and you're falling in love and you're meeting people, you're constantly trying to explain to them and they're explaining to you like, who, who am I, who are you? You know, and you have to like put into words everything about you and hope that this person gets it and like is compatible in some way. And I almost want to just bring my chart with me now whenever I'm meeting someone and be like, can you just look at this and decide if you're down with this or not? This was just such kind of like a transformative experience for me. Even if like you don't believe in astrology, just give it a shot maybe like once. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing, but at least give it a shot. You'll be surprised.